Hey YouTube, Bill here. Making some strawberry rhubarb jam today. So the first step, I'm picking some strawberries out here with my family. I go to the Pick Your Own place called Quantum View Farms. They have great strawberries and a great picking system. Here's the berries I got. Nice luscious red berries. Some of them are a little pale. That's okay because when you're making jam, the lighter colored ones have more pectin. The first step when we get our strawberries home, obviously, is to wash them. And make sure they're nice and clean. We don't want any harmful chemicals or any other kind of thing going into our strawberry jam. After that, we cut all the tops off and crush them down. You really need to crush them down one layer at a time. I was playing around there just crushing one, but just add a layer, crush them up, add another layer, crush them up. Keep working through until you get about a quart of crushed strawberries. The next step is picking some rhubarb. We'll probably need about the equal amounts of chopped rhubarb versus crushed strawberries. In this particular case, I'll end up with about a quart of crushed strawberries versus roughly about eight stalks of rhubarb, which when chopped up equals about a quart one quart of crushed strawberries they crush down about about 50 percent depending on the size of the berries and if they're hollow or not here you can see some of my mediocre knife skills i'm not actually bad with a knife but in this case trying to record while using a knife and the knife actually could use the sharpening uh, maybe i'll do that in another video you just want to chop up the, the rhubarb into small pieces. I'm putting it in a quart jar here. The next step is we gotta add our ingredients. One quart of crushed strawberries into the pan. And we need our one quart of chopped up rhubarb into the pan. Then we also need our two packets of no sugar, low sugar pectin. You gotta use the, the low sugar version because pectin gels when in the presence of sugar. If you use the full sugar pectin, the regular pectin, that will actually uh, not gel if you don't add the same amount of sugar. I'm adding a half cup of lemon juice there. So when we add our, our sugar in, 
I like my jam to be less sweet. The natural sugars of the berries come through a lot better there. But as I said, you have to use the no sugar, low sugar pectin. Once our fruit mixture is up to a boil, then we can add our sugar. In this case, I'm adding six cups of sugar, which is, I, if I vaguely recall, the original recipe called for five cups of sugar or four and a half cups of sugar per recipe. So I'm reducing it by about a third. You can add even less sugar. I've done that. A lot of times I usually will do half the sugar but in this case, some of those berries were underripe, so I added a little bit more. Once we get the sugar added, we need to keep stirring it, and we can't stop stirring it or it'll scorch badly on the bottom. You don't want burned flavor in your jam. If you feel necessary to watch it a little less and turn the temperature down, you can do that. It really the, will go faster with more heat, though. So. Keep heating and stirring until you get to a boil that you can't stir down. In this case, you may want to wear some rubber gloves because when the boil that you can't stir down keeps going, it'll start splattering flaming hot, high sugar, sticky sweet jam onto your hands. You can see right about there is where we want to be. And then once we get to that point, now we start our timer for one minute. You Keep stirring the whole time while it's boiling for one full minute. Don't cut it short. This is required for the pectin to work. next step is to transfer your jam into your jars. I'm using pint jars here. You want to get the jars filled to within a quarter inch of the surface of the jar. Not more than that. You can leave a little extra space, that's okay. You don't want to go more than that because you need the air space. That's the way that the canning process works. As you're heating up the jars, it doesn't make a perfect seal on the lids. The air will expand, evacuate from the jar, and as it cools, it pulls down and will suck the lid of the jar in and create the, the seal. And I'm being a little bit messy here, which is okay, because the very last step before putting on the lids will be wiping down the, the lids. We're wiping down the rims of the jars, I mean, sorry about that. And what we want to do is get it nice and clean, and then we'll put our lids on.
put our two-piece lid and ring combination on here. One lid per jar, obviously, and one ring per jar, obviously. There's a hair on that for some reason. I think it was a little bit of the seal that was the manufacturing defect. When you're tightening the rings down, you want to make sure you don't make them too tight. It should just be just gently finger tight. You need to be able to evacuate the, the air from inside the, the headspace, as I mentioned. And the final step of the process is to transfer the jars into our boiling water bath canner. We want to set the timer. These are pints, so we want to do the timer for 15 minutes. Uh, if it were half pints, you'd do 10 minutes. I forgot there, and then I reset the timer. final step here is to use our jar lifter to pull the jars out and transfer them to a heat safe place that's out of drafts. You want to just some place where you can just leave them alone and they won't interfere with anything for 12 to 24 hours. It'll take way less than that for them to actually seal. Usually about 10 or 15 minutes. But you really want to just leave them alone and walk away. Don't touch them. Don't try and mess with them and let them do their thing, let them seal on their own. Ha <laughs> ha.